Hello and welcome in another Python tutorial and in this one we are going to see how we can read QR codes and barcodes using Python. In fact, the code that we are going to create is exactly the same regardless if we read QR codes or barcodes. This tutorial is divided into three parts. In the first part we are going to read these two images that contain QR code that are in the folder on the right side of the screen. In the second part we are going to use our camera to read codes. And in the third part, we're going to put all this into practice through a short project. So let's get started. The first thing, of course, we need to import the necessary libraries. And in this case, it would be CV2, which will be used to read the image in the first part of the tutorial or later on, uh, let's say the camera or let's say video input. And from pyzbar.pyzbar, we're going to import decode and this is basically what we're going to use to decode the code regardless if it's QR code or barcode to get the content out of it so we have two images on the right side the first one is they're both PNG so the first one is just a tutorial and the second one the second one actually contains the first one and there's an extra one on the right side so IMG or image would be equal to CV to dot im or image read and in the brackets we're going to specify tutorial.png so if we print decode of img so the content of the img this would be the outcome so we get a lot of information but as you can see it's a list so it is a list that contains one element and it contains the data so hello this is a QR code tutorial this is something that was created in the previous tutorial then we can see what kind of a code it is so this is specified oh this is a QR code then we have a form so it's a rectangular that's uh, the width and height and we get the polygon or the, the outside points of the QR code if you're interested in that um, and if we have more than one QR code in one image or barcode. Well, as you can see, Python can recognize that. So this list now contains two elements. So we have decoded, that's the first one that stops here. It has all the information that we just saw. And we have the second one, which is the second element of this list. And you can check that if you just print the length of this list, you it should be two. So the, the length of this list should be two. Now, ideally, when you're creating a script, you want it to work regardless of the number of codes that you have in the image. Um, otherwise, you would have to keep changing that. So what we're going to do is for code in decode of IMG. So that regardless of um, the image that we have, we want to decode it. And then for every code that you find there, it could be just one, it could be more than one. We want to print code dot type. So if you want to see if it's a QR code or not, or a barcode, and then you would like to print code.data. Now, if you print it as it is, it would work, but the data should also be decoded using UTF-8. Otherwise, you get this B uh, letters and the, the string out, outside of it. So you can see that these are both QR codes and we get the content. So, but let's also use decode and then UTF-8 to get rid of those weird things in front or after it. So now you can see that it clearly says, okay, so this is QR code. This is the content of the first one. And this is the second one. And the content is basically a link to my YouTube channel. So this is how you would go into reading a QR code or multiple QR codes or barcodes from an image. Now let's continue and see how we would do that um, if we have to use our camera. Now the flow of information is actually quite similar. Instead of having an image, well, we would have a capture of our camera. So CAP would be equal to CV2.video capture. And then in the brackets we have zero. Then what we can adjust here is the width and height of our camera. So let's say that we would like to set our width so three is for width 640 pixels and so number three width and then cap dot set number four is the height to 480 so number four is height then 
if we compare a camera to an image, basically a camera is something that keeps recording. It's an ongoing event compared to an image that's a, just a snapshot. Um, what we want to do is we want to have, let's say, camera to be equal to true. Now, basically, if you are using a, a QR code or a barcode scanner, it has a button and this, this uh, camera would be basically false and it would turn true based on the whether the button is pressed or not. But while camera is equal to true, in this case, we don't have a button, so I'll just set it to, to be true always. Uh, but while it's true, while it's equal, equal to true, basically one, what we want to do is something that we have here below already. So for code in decode, but we're not going to decode image. What we're going to decode is basically the frame. So we need to get the frame or what is being recorded by the camera. Now, when we read this capture, there are two information that we get. We get success, which is a Boolean of one or a zero, and we get the frame. So cap.read would be say, stored in these two variables. So success, it would be just one or a zero, and frame is basically what we're interested in. So for the code that you see for Python C's in decode of frame, what we want to do is, well, something that we just did already. So we want to print, let's say, the type of the code, and we want to decode that code using UTF-8. Um, if we run it as it is, although it would work, so the camera would turn on, um, you would not be able to see it because we don't show it on the desktop. And if we want to do that, well, we're going to use cv2.imshow or image show. Uh, the, the window name would be just, let's say, testing, code, scan, and then we would like to also display the frame, and then cv2.wait key, I'm going to set it to one, or that's a frame after one millisecond, you can change that as you prefer, but let's run it as it is and see what is the outcome. And on the right side, I'm going to have this part, which is the shell that would display um, the outcome of whatever we scan. So this is the camera. So as you can see, it works. What I have is a barcode. I have this notebook that has a barcode and let's see what it... Now, as you can see on the right side, it shows the type of the code, but it keeps running because every one millisecond it keeps getting scanned again and again. So we have the type of the code and we have the content. Now, even though this might be what you're looking for and it's, it's, it's a great way to well, make use of this. Uh, the third part of this tutorial is creating an, a bit more of a project out of this. So let's say that you have a, a concert that's about to happen or you have a sport event and this is not enough. Uh, scanning the type of code and the content is not enough because, well, somebody might just create a fake code and, well, it would still be readable, right? Or maybe more than one person would use the same code. Well, that would again be um, something that would not appear here. So we need to make some checks on that. Now, how do we do that? Well, let's start by creating a list of used codes. And this would prevent people from entering the event using the same code uh, more than once. So more than one person would not be able to enter the venue uh, with the same code. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is for code in decode frame, first we want to check if code.data.decode using UTF-8 is not in our used codes. If it's not in there, then what we would like to say is approved. You can enter. So it's a brand new code. It has not been used. You can enter. Uh, we can also print, I don't know if the type is, is important, I would not print it in this case, but let's say we would still want to have the content in, so we have the content of uh, the code. And then what we want to do is, we want to uh, use codes, let me make sure this, you can see, so used codes.append and we want to append this code.data.decode. So, well, it has been used already, so now it is in the list. It can no longer be used 
But what we also want to do is use time.sleep for five seconds. So you want that camera to not work for five seconds. Otherwise, we get this spamming. Not, not only that it's spamming, but it's also going to be changed from being approved to else if the code is in used codes, then we would like to print, sorry, this code has been already used. Now, we don't want um, to not have this time.sleep, which means we need to also import time, because otherwise it would convert really quickly from being approved to sorry, this code has been already used because it just takes one millisecond. So we want that to happen, so we want to have time.sleep for again for five seconds. Um, you can also have else here, but there is no other scenario that it can that can happen because the code is either in the used codes or not in used codes. And let's give it a shot and just try to run this and see if this would work if uh, we can use the same code more than once. So the first thing is of course running the code. Uh, you can actually take just any item that you have around you that should have a code. So this is the first attempt. So as you can see, it says approved, you can enter. And as you can see, the camera is st has stopped for five seconds. Now we try to do the same thing again. So I'm just, let's see, did it? Let's see. Sorry, this code has been already used. So as you can see, you can't use the same code more than once. So we are sure that um, this works. That, we, that it would not be abused, so not more than one person. And if you have, a, 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 let's say, an event that has seats assigned, then that's more difficult to be abused. But if you have an event that has just a bunch of standing places with no seats, then it can be abused. So you want to make sure that uh, this works. And if you usually, you would have valid codes. That would be equal to not an empty list, but it would contain all these um, valid codes that people can use. And before checking this part, before checking the used codes, basically you would have, um, if this data decoded is in the valid codes. And if it is a valid code that you would like to check if it's a used code or not. So that's the one thing that can be improved uh, on this script. And the second one is that you, may, you might want to add a timestamp. And the reason for that is, let's say that the person who's, who's outside and scanning this code has just scanned the code, but is not sure if, if um, it was scanned or not. Um, well, basically, if he tries to, or she tries to scan it again, then the outcome would be that it has been already used. So maybe it's good to have, yes, sorry, it has been used. Um, let's say if it's 10 seconds ago, then that person knows that, well, it seems that I've scanned it already. So it's more of a, a, a check for the person as well. So you, whenever you're writing a code, you have to question, is there something that I'm missing that can go wrong? And uh, just keep asking that question. Make sure that you cover all scenarios and then you're good to go. So thank you for following this tutorial until the very end and see you in the next one.